You know, drama kind of gets a bad rap, but in the case of Blink-182, drama can lead to positivity. It doesn't always need to be a whole bunch of toxicity. It doesn't need to be a pile of negativity either. It could spawn new life. It could bring new creative adventures. Because in the case of Blink-182, there were a whole bunch of spin-off projects, all because of one big drama. Now we all know drama is the lifeblood of this channel, so we're going to go through all of those side projects, all of those spin-offs from worst to best. Hey ladies, Dan Frampton here, and before we get going, has a bet you like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, thank you very much. Let's get all slippery and slimy and go head first down this rock and roll rabbit hole. Coming in at number six, we got Angels and Airwaves, okay? This is Tom's project that happened after Blink-182 disintegrated in like 2005 or whatever. And he said it's like Radiohead, Pink Floyd, and U2 inspired. So that's why it's right here at the bottom of the list. I don't like this stuff. This is just too long. All these songs are so pretentious and so wanky ass. So we got We Don't Need to Whisper here, and then I Empire, and these things are just bloated, masturbatory pieces of crap, and Tom does not have the chops to pull this stuff off, okay? He's bitten off way more than he can chew on these projects. Over here, Love Part 1 and 2, it's like a two hour, two part album. This thing is so hard to get through. And you know what I did for this channel? I listened to all of these records, and right here, this was so painful. This was the worst of the worst. The Dreamwalker, my god. And then we got this one over here, fucking Life Forms. This is the most recent record of theirs that came out in 2021. And here, yeah, it's a little bit atmospheric, and all these songs are like six to eight minutes long, and it seems to only exist at a spite, still after all these years. And this isn't even the project that started all the drama. This happened after all the drama. So when Blink-182 disintegrated and Tom went off and did this, that left Mark and Travis scratching their asses being like, what are we gonna do next? So what they did was this thing over here, Plus 44. They named it Plus 44 because they came up with the idea in London and that is like the area code Plus 44 or the international dialing code or whatever. So I guess very creative way to come up with your band name but this is just pop rock. This is just like radio friendly, toothless crap. I don't enjoy this record. It's not even really that catchy because I don't really have anything against pop. You know, I don't have anything against catchy songs, but this just isn't it. It was a commercial flop, but hardcore Blink-182 fans really do dig it. It started when Mark and Travis bought this studio and then they wrote all these songs and put them down kind of electronically. And then they weren't exactly like, I guess, happy with the electronic forms of them because then they just kind of did like full instrumentation of it. And it kind of comes across as a little bit like indie rock postal service-y at times, but that's why it's at number five, okay? And we're gonna be moving on to the number four spot at Boxcar Racer, and this is where all the drama happens. Now, I don't know why in 2001, Tom was like, I'm gonna do a project while Blink-182 is still a thing, but he didn't want it to sound like Blink-182, so he was like, Mark, you can't join, but, but Travis, you're a pretty good little drummer, so you can come on over here to Boxcar Racer. Now, it's really well known that Mark Hoppus kind of took this personally. He wanted to be a part of this project, and because of the fact that he wasn't, it caused all this drama and all this tension that still kind of exists at the core of Blink-182 today. Now, I don't know why Tom just couldn't have Mark Hoppus come in and like play the triangle or something. Why didn't you just have the guy involved in some way? But I'm glad that you didn't because I love the drama and the drama created all this sort of stuff. But still, out of all these projects, nothing that I like, okay? This is all bottom of the barrel stuff. Stuff. But then, coming in at number three, it starts to get a little bit better for the band in 2019, okay? That's pretty recently, but Mark Hoppus separates from all the fucking Blink-182 nonsense, finds a friendship with the guy from All Time Low, I believe his name was Alex, and then they put together this kind of like, dirty little pop rock record, and it's pretty dang good. This first EP, Strange Love, it's got this first song on it called Drug, and it's gritty, it's dirty, it's also catchy. I love this thing, it's a total banger. The song How To Live really doesn't do it for me on this thing, but everything else, all other five songs, pretty good little listens. But later on in that same year, 2019, Simple Creatures put out another little EP, another little six song thing called Everything 
opposite, and it is a little bit better in my opinion than the first one. It's got like these dirty synths that makes you feel kind of grimy and filthy a little bit, but also it's like a glitzy little pop thing. And this is when the whole pop thing is actually being nailed, because over here, when they're trying to do pop stuff, and it's just like totally missing the mark, but here it's absolutely hitting. But we're getting to the top of the list now. Coming in at number two, we got transplants. Now, this started as Tim Armstrong's little bedroom project, okay? He got this little, I don't know, digital audio workstation or whatever, and he was like, okay, I'm gonna be making these songs, I'm gonna be playing these little things, maybe some organs, maybe some like steel drums or whatever, and then he got Travis Barker to come in, he got Rob the Skinhead to come in or whatever, then he got a bunch of his friends, he got Brody Dahl, Davey Havoc, and you know, names kind of in that realm or whatever, and this thing actually is a very creative record and very fun to listen to. It's not very focused, and you can tell that it wasn't like conceived as a record. It was just kind of a bunch of ideas thrown at the wall. Some of them hit, some of them didn't, but a very creative time. This thing came out in 2002, but in 2005 they put out Haunted Cities, and it is a pretty good record too, but not as good as their 2013 record in a war zone. Now, I was warned that this record wasn't going to be very good because, to be honest, I haven't listened to it, okay? But I listened to it, and I listened to it a couple times, to be honest, because I actually love this thing. This is probably the most in-your-face thing that any of the band members have ever done, okay? This thing kind of leans on a little bit of hardcore roots. This thing is fast. This thing is aggressive. It's got Be Real from Cypress Hill featuring on this thing, for Christ's sake. I love this thing. Raw energy, passion. But it was a commercial failure. It was a critical failure, and the fans hated it as well. I seem to be the only person that loves this record, and I'll tell you, I really do. The only other thing that is almost as good as this is one song off of Boxcar Racer, and it's ironically called my first punk song, and goddamn, it proves that these guys could actually write good punk music if they tried. But you think that's everything. That's all the spin-offs, right? No way. There is still one that tops the list. There is one that takes the cake. There is one that is the cherry on top. The number one Blink-182 spin-off Alkaline Trio. Okay, bye.